I don't know where to begin with this one, so I'm just going to start. Um, hello, welcome back if you have been here before. It's Anna, welcome back to my booktube channel. If you're new, this might be a really confusing uh, video for you to start on, not gonna lie, um, because it's kind of a thing that is a long delayed reading update turned into a whole bunch of stuff just happened in my life in a very short, um, period of time. If you couldn't guess by the amount of moving boxes and disarray and everything else that is around and behind me, I'm perching on my desk chair because that's what I do when I'm stressed. So yeah, um, this is normally a book channel and when I last left you off, um, I think I was actually about to go for my 30th birthday <laughs> celebration with my husband, Sean, which was back in late February and it's now early May. So where have I been? Um, well, first of all, the 30th birthday celebration was phenomenal. He took me to Olympia for the day. He said I could go to the bookstores there. I could pick out whatever I wanted, which I did. I think I got 10 books. We went to a mixture of new stores, used stores. I will try to remember if I can to put the names of the places that we went down below, but I will also eventually be going back and making a video a little bit more about the things um, that I read. And I will also be doing my books that stood out to me in 2024 so far, but we'll get to that in a minute. So it was a really great day. We went to a Japanese garden, we went book shopping, and then we had a really nice dinner. It was fantastic. I thought to myself, I want to make my reading vlog for the month of March then because I've been doing these like monthly reading vlogs and they've been working pretty well for me. But then I was just feeling really like in the moment and sometimes when you're in the moment you want to record it but then sometimes you just want to like be in it and enjoy that. And I sometimes have to like go against this natural tendency I have to like record and analyze everything and just be in the moment. So I was like we're gonna give this whole being in the moment thing a try. Got about halfway through March, having a great time, work's going great, uh, life's going pretty good too, you know, no major emergencies, and then a bunch of stuff, like a whole bunch of stuff, happened in, in very quick succession, like within three weeks. So first thing happened, um, my dog, one of my dogs, tore her other ACL or UCL rather. I think that's the the um, ligament in their knees that are similar to the ACL in our knees. She had torn one last year and had to have surgery to repair the joint and go around that. And that was incredibly expensive and a very long recovery. And we had literally just gotten home from seeing Dune 2, which was amazing. My husband went to take the dogs out. And then I get this panicked phone call from him in the middle of the night saying, I think Gemma just tore her ACL because she'd been running and playing. And then she suddenly just like yelped out and started crying. And yeah, we, we knew because she had already had this injury before that it was the other one. And we knew once a dog tears one, they're very likely to tear the other. So we knew it was a matter of time, but it also just sucks that like a year after her first surgery and recovery and us recovering from affording all that, we had to do it again. Then I get some feedback from one of my doctors. So if you've been here for a while, you might've heard me talk about um, the process of going through like infertility and fertility treatment. Um, it's been a years long process now and it's definitely something that weighs a lot on my mind. Um, even though that's not something that I really wanna get super into on this channel, it is kind of a big part of why I was gone for the end of March into mid-April and that was because my doctor told me that I had to have some surgery that's related to the infertility stuff and that I was gonna just need some time to prep and then recover from that. So there were a lot of things that I needed to do leading up to this surgery. Um, I had to do a lot of different things with medications and hormones and getting a lot of things timed and organized just right. And to be honest, I really just wasn't feeling well leading up to it. Uh, I wound up getting an infection that was not because of the medication that I was on, but it happened like after I started this medication. So it was kind of a cause and effect thing. So I was sick with that for a while. And then I actually had the surgery. Um, it's good. It was planned. I'm doing okay now. You know, I went through all of my recovery and now basically I'm just um, 
getting my normal stamina back, but like the medical and pain management part of my recovery is over. Like other than stamina and that kind of thing, I'm, I'm doing fine now, which is great. I'm very grateful for that. I'm very grateful for my surgeon and my anesthesiologist and all of the people that made that go smoothly and also for my mental health care providers doing so much to support me to say nothing of my family and friends but it was just it was just such a stressful thing that I was really nervous about and now it's over and I'm okay I could not ask for better however <laughs> right around the time I was getting ready to go in for this surgery it was literally like the week I was supposed to get it um, we had been talking with our landlord of the house that we've been renting now for the past four years, and he had wanted to raise our rent, which we expected because we've been paying the same rent for the past four years. We were like, okay, he's going to want to raise it. And he, he raised us like 45%, like this astronomical offer that is more than I think any person could reasonably afford. Um, we tried to negotiate with him. We weren't really able to talk him down to a point where we could afford this because of our finances and because of the fact that we're trying to have children and, you know, like that's taking a lot of extra time and effort and money, frankly, because infertility is expensive. I'm just grabbing coffee for this because I need it. Um, so we were like, okay, you've raised our rent by an amount we can't afford. That's fine. We'll just find someplace else to live. Like, even though I really don't like moving, I don't think anyone does except my husband, which is a little weird actually. Um, but um, moving, right. We'd be able to find a new house, da, 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 da. And we looked around and around and around in the area and just given the state of our finances and the fact that we are looking to grow our family as we go forward with this like infertility treatment for me, there's nowhere around here that we could afford to stay. Like nowhere in the big Seattle area or environs that we could afford to stay and that would work for like jobs and family and all of that stuff. It's just not going to happen. So then we started looking farther afield and the sort of TLDR of this is we're moving at the end of May and we are going to be moving to Maryland. Um, we're moving to Baltimore. I've actually never been there, which is a little bit oh, nerve wracking, but my husband used to live there. He did a fellowship at Johns Hopkins um, before we met and he loved it there. He's always spoken really highly of it. It's so much more affordable than where we live right now. We're actually able, and we're very fortunate that we were in this position, but we're actually able to put an offer in on a house there that'll be like our house. And that offer was accepted. So until we go to close on the house, you know, knock on wood, it's, it's not official yet, but we're homeowners now. Like, I'm not even gonna get into all of the stuff that went into looking for this house, but suffice to say that when we were doing our virtual home inspection, I was literally lying on the couch after taking pain medication, like two days after this surgery, being like, thumbs up, yep, everything looks great while my husband's on the phone with the realtor. It's been really, really nuts. Um, so we're moving to Baltimore at the end of the month. This also means that for instance, you probably saw Erin doing all the disability readathon stuff by herself this year, which thank you so much, Erin. And I also just want to apologize. I mean, I talked with her about this already and, you know, she was very kind, but I, I still feel like I know that real life comes first, but I love this readathon and I love like being one of the organizers and I feel bad, like I really let people down. But I also think having major surgery, having a dog have major surgery and finding out you're going to have to move in less than a month. It's just one of those times that you really just go, got to prioritize dealing with real life matters. And I haven't done a ton of reading anyway, because I've been stressed and busy. And as you can see, you know, packing up all of my books, it's a lot of books. I have weeded through a lot of them. And I think I've probably given away or donated or sold about like 10 bankers boxes, size boxes of books to say nothing of some of the board games and other media and things like that because we got to drive across the country and we got to be really judicious about the things that we bring and the things that we pack. 
Hindsight's 2020, of course, you know, if I had known that I was going to be moving in four years, would I have wound up adding books to my collection like this was going to be my house forever? Probably not, but I had no way of knowing. We honestly had been discussing like the possibility of rent to own here. That's how serious it was wanting to stay here. And now that's gone completely out the window. So the other difficulty with this, I mean, there are many. <laughs> Let's, let's be real here, there are many. The other difficulty with this though is that for the second time in seven years, I'm uprooting my whole life to move across the country. Um, I started, well, I, I started this booktube channel back when I still lived in Florida, but the earliest video that you can actually see and when I started posting like really consistently and in earnest, was shortly after I had first moved to Seattle in 2017. I think I started posting February 2018 because Sean very kindly gave me a camera and a microphone for my birthday that year. And you've seen me move through many places. You've seen me go through the pandemic. You've seen, you know, all kinds of travel and reading and long gaps and short gaps between videos. You've been with me as I've posted multiple times a week. You've been with me as I've been on an extended break. Um, thanks to the fun and exciting nervous breakdown I had in 2021. I say fun and exciting. It was not. It was neither fun nor exciting. It was, it was terrible. I'm just making a joke. Um, it just requires such a leap of faith to do something like this again, even though I'm doing it with the support and love of my husband and my family and we are going to be living closer to our families again, which is great. That's really important to us. It's also just, it's so stressful, right? Like moving, the last time I moved, I made that being white on booktube video. I wasn't going to film anything because I was moving and it was the pandemic. And then the police murdered George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and just everything in the world started to go on fire more so than it already is. And I remember thinking, I need to just stop what I'm doing and say my piece about what white privilege gets you on booktube and how white booktubers need to be doing better. And now I've also like not even really formulated anything to say on YouTube about what's going on between like Israel and Gaza and the genocide that's going on there. Because again, I have not been posting here. I have been doing what I can on my own in terms of speaking out, in terms of visible um, shows of support and solidarity with the people in Gaza, with donating money, donating time and, and resources to support people who are able to be protesting. Um, it's just, it's all so much. My problems, and my stresses really pale in comparison to things like that. And I can't help but think about that a lot. I mean, we're coming up to Mother's Day in the United States and I'm thinking about my mother and my aunts and I can't think about it without thinking about all of the mothers who have lost children and the children who have been orphaned and the whole families that have just been wiped out. And I'm just, <sighs> every time I feel like gratitude that I will get to be closer to my family. I also think of, of those who are not going to get that because of this genocide and because what the Israeli government is doing is, is evil and wrong. That's not really something that I'm, I'm looking to debate here, you know? For what it's worth, I say that still like with a full heart as a Jewish person that I completely disagree with that and I think it's condemnable, I really do. Um, so yeah, um, there has been quite a lot, quite a lot going on. Um, so I didn't really have like a particular place I was looking to go to end this or anything. I just thought, okay, so many things have happened that now I just want to say something about it so that I've, I've at least like made some mention here. And also because 
I love the community that I have here and I love that you all seem to be perfectly happy to indulge this as somewhat of a like old school video diary, which is really kind of how I've been treating it since 2021, 2022. You know, I've, I've really pivoted much more so towards this being something that I do for me for fun rather than a product I am producing for other people to watch. And to be honest, that's one hell of a good thing right now because right now my life is really not productive in that way. It's it's not like a fun, shiny, Instagrammable thing. I think there are great many moments of beauty and hope and joy in my life at the moment. There are also a lot of, there is also a lot of grief in my life at the moment. Um, you know, grieving infertility, grieving the loss of the friends that I will be moving away from, grieving the loss of, I mean, this is the only time in my life I've ever actually been sad to leave a job. I love my day job. It's great. I love the work that I get to do every day. And now I have to leave it. When I really started to feel like I was where I was supposed to be, doing work I'm supposed to be doing, making a difference, making an impact, and feeling valued and respected and appreciated in the workplace, which is also not really something that has ever been present for me in a big way. You know, I'm 30 years old and this is the first place I've worked for, you know, like consistently that I really felt has, has valued and appreciated me. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be really hard to leave. Um, I don't really have any plans in terms of a timeline of posting things here more regularly. Hopefully, um, I'll be able to do some follow-up for the disability readathon stuff later this year because clearly I was <laughs> busy being disabled by surgery, um, to do that and to read. I think I will probably be making some videos like a travel log, um, because we're going to drive across country to get out to Maryland. Don't think I'm going to be too worried about uploading that and editing it in real time, but never say never. We'll see. That is something, though, that I would like to have and I would like to keep a record of, to be honest. So, yeah, I don't really have a fun way to end this. So if you got a good relationship with them, go hug your mother or your mother-like figure in honor of Mother's Day. Please do what you can to support the people that are suffering under this genocide in Gaza, um, whether that's by donating money, time, other resources, speaking out, like just doing what you can. I feel like such a broken record for saying this, but like calling and emailing your representatives and senators if the, you're in the US or whoever your like government officials are if you live elsewhere. I know I have some folks in Canada and the UK that watch. so. I guess that's your MP. Um, yeah. Okay. I'll see you later.